What is going on? It's your boy G's playing again. With the launch of Ragnarok Origin NA server on November 10th, I noticed some subtle differences between the Korean server and the NA server. I also been getting a lot of the same frequently asked questions in my comments, so I decided to make a tips and tricks video specifically for the NA server and the new players joining us. This video will break down some important mechanics of the game that will help you on your journey. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content like this. Alright, let's get started. Let's get straight into it with number 1. Mercenaries are companions that will help you with your travels when playing. They can attack when you attack, take majority of the damage, and so on. There are currently 5 different mercenaries that you can choose from, and each one benefiting you differently depending on what class you pick. They also have a set equipment that you can upgrade using coins to make them stronger. Their skills are limited, but you do have the freedom of choosing which one you want to keep active. So for example, if you don't want your Sanji to use Attention Concentrate, then you can just uncheck the box and she will not use it. The talent section are just traits that you can unlock at certain levels to enhance your mercenary's fighting ability. You have a couple of choices that you can pick from and level them up through the use of talent scrolls. Now here are some recommendations for which mercenaries you should go with. If you are not playing a priest as your main character, then every class should use the priest mercenary. They can heal you and give you buffs as well. They're not the strongest so I usually just uncheck the holy light skill so she won't waste SP on it. Now if you're playing battle priest or using an axe or mace as a merchant, then I highly recommend you take Natalie the merchant as one of your mercenaries. She has a skill that will boost her attack speed if you're using an axe or mace type weapon and will only work for those types of weapons. For wizards, assassins, and Hunter, I would recommend you going Ray the Knight. He has a high base HP stat to help you tank monsters when farming or grinding as well as an AoE skill. For Nice, I do recommend Ayumi the Mage. She can help kill mobs much faster with her elemental skills. Alright, let's move on to number 2. A lot of you have been asking me if you can switch builds or can you reset your stats and skills. As far as switching builds goes, at about level 45 I believe is when the preset option will open up. Presets allows you to switch to a different build anytime you want outside of of combat. To unlock these presets, you will need zennies, ranging from 20k to 50k depending on how many you've unlocked. You can unlock these presets for your stats, skills, equipments, and your beer score, which we will talk about in another video. As far as resetting skills and stats, you will have 3 free resets for each of them. So don't worry too much if you messed up on the stat point or you want to try something out, you'll be able to reset it later. And once you've used up all 3 of your free resets, you can reset them through the use of items like the skill reset stick and the quality reincarnation stone. You can buy these in the RO shop with Zenies at a later level when more options opens up. Now let's move on to number 3. The reason why I really like this game compared to the other Ragnarok titles is that this game makes you focus on one character only, meaning there is no real reason for me to make a secondary or multiple characters. Because there is no trading system or a shared storage system in this game, there's no benefit in making a separate merchant class or a farming character. The only benefit I can see from making another character is if you want a slave priest or if you want to keep a character at their base jobs until the secondary classes comes out. So to keep it short, unless you want to run and control a full party by yourself, there's no real Real reason to make multiple characters. Next we got number 4. Many of you probably got this letter in your mail saying your base level has reached the current level limit. That is because this game does a great job making sure no one is over level during the beginning. To check what the level cap is, you can check the server level through your profile. Just hit the question mark by your base level and you can check what the server level is, when the next server level will increase, and what your real level is currently. Usually the level will cap around 3 or 5 levels above the server level and from there you can still finish quests or gain experience experience points but it will not show. But don't worry because you're not wasting any experience points or anything like that. They will stack until the next server level gets released and you receive all of those experience at once. The same goes for your job level. If you hit job level 40 as a mage or a swordsman, you can still accumulate experience points and when you change jobs to a crusader or a sage later on, you'll get all of those experience points at once. That way you can jump from a mage all the way to a professor in like 5 minutes if you stacked enough job level experience. Another thing you do have to remember is that depending if your level is above or below the server level, the amount of experience you gain will be different. If you're below the server level, you will gain additional experience from quests and mobs, and if you're above the server level, there will be a penalty. This is honestly a great mechanic within the game to keep everything at the same pace, especially when it comes to the competitive format of the game, and it really allows you to enjoy the game and all of its contents besides just mindless grinding. Now let's get into the final tips and trick. Number 5. The game has many different contents for you to enjoy
enjoy and utilize. Some has more benefits than others, so I'll go over the ones with the most benefits. When you are pretty much done with all your quests or you just want to keep your game on autopilot, the best thing for you to do is the monster research hunt. In your monster glossary, you can find the exploration records tab that shows you all of the current monsters in game and the number of kills you got for each one of them. If you hit the number goal for each monster, you'll receive research points that will be added to your total progress. At different monster research levels, you'll find that you can get additional stat boosts to help you make yourself stronger. Now these aren't crazy stat increases, but enough to help you on your journey. You can gain research points faster by completing entire rows. There's also a ranking system to see who has the most points and the least amount of real life. The next content is more of a recommendation as the content is not implemented as of yet, but the car album will have an option for you to store your unused cars to gain additional stat points as well. You can only store one and depending on the car, you'll gain different stat boosts. I'll go over that more in detail when the content is actually released, but for now, I do recommend you saving unwanted cars instead of selling them. The final piece of content that will benefit you the most is the wardrobe feature. If you open up your wardrobe, you can also see your fashion rating level. By obtaining headgears and costumes, you can store your extra or unwanted ones into your wardrobe. Doing so will increase your fashion rating and thus increasing your stats as well as getting additional gifts. A lot of these headgears, you can craft them by having the required items, but some of them you do need blueprints for, which are dropped by minis or MVPs. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have any other questions that you want me to answer, please let me know in the comments and I'll make a part 2 for it. You can also check out some of my other guys because they are still very relevant. But if you stuck around for this long, then I'll give you one final piece of advice as a bonus. When you're grinding for levels, always level around places where you need materials for your gears. Crafting certain gears is going to require higher graded materials, which the drop rates are pretty low. So if you're leveling in areas that will drop them, hopefully by the time you hit the level for your equipment, you'll have enough to craft them. But that is my final bonus advice. I hope you enjoyed this video and gave you a lot of good information. And also, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Because for every single support I get from you guys, it's one step closer for me to quit my day job. Anyways, thank you so much for all the love and I truly appreciate everything. Please have a good weekend and I'll see you in the next video.